Dude, sucking at something is the first step towards being sort of good at something. In the end, I wasn't really sort of good at something. I was more like sort of okay at it. Believe me, I tried. I researched, I watched what good welding is supposed to look and sound like. But when Torch touched the extremely thin Japanese sheet metal, it melted like butter. I couldn't spend a second in any given spot without blowing a hole through. In welding, everything seems like half the battle. Prepping is half the battle. Fabricating is half the battle. Technique is half the battle. Temperature is half the battle. Timing is half the battle. At the end of the day, you're fighting 13 battles and retreating on all fronts. In the end, the job was completed. Was it pretty? No. Will it hold? I hope so. Was it a ton of fun? Hell yeah. It was strangely therapeutic, learning how to fit pieces together properly, fill in large holes and gaps, almost burn the car down. Why is it smoking? Looking back at this video as a complete beginner, I enjoy seeing the transformation from first pressing the trigger to finishing my last weld. Your feedback is very important to me, but please go easy on me. I'm new here. Anyways, here's the steps I took to remove all the rust and put new metal in its place. At the end of the video, I'll give some advice for the beginners like myself. Let's get to it. In preparation for this task, I needed to buy the appropriate equipment. I purchased an install device grip in my mobile workbench. A 6 inch vice grip sheet metal brake for bending up to 90 degrees, a pair of welding gloves, and an auto darkening helmet. The welder was purchased from KMS Tools and was chosen for its price and compatibility with both gas and flux core welding. The gas mixture was of argon and CO2 and was quite costly. Everything was fairly simple to set up. If you need a tutorial, there's plenty on YouTube. But simply put, I set the gas regulator to just above 20 psi and the tensioner was set so that there was a slight curl when pressed against this block. I learned this from the Tim Welds YouTube channel. I don't think it did it right. I used a solid 9mm wire, as the 6mm wire that came with the welder didn't fit in the 8mm wire feeder. The wiring temperature diagram, although for different wire thicknesses, suggested settings between B3 for 20 gauge and C3 for 16 gauge, which I followed for the most part. I later started preferring higher heat. Finally, I purchased two pieces of sheet metal, one 20 gauge for the body pieces and one 16 gauge for the structural pieces. Okay, so the plan is to cut out all the bad stuff. So I'm thinking since it seems to be rusting right in down in here, I will do the best I can to make some straight lines, maybe cut here and straight up this way and see how far back this goes. Uh, but whatever I do, I want it to be straight lines. I want to try to stay away from these, uh, these curved parts if I can. Better. What is that? Oh. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice. All oh, that rusty goodness. It's looking pretty good inside. A little bit of rust, but maybe I can uh, get in there and coat it. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh, 
Well, that's a bummer. So there was the little holes right here. And sure enough, I cut it open and everything behind it is just rotten. I don't think it's gonna change the integrity of the structure of these mounting points, but you know, does it creep around after that? I think for now, I'll just fix the structure and, uh, and I'm good to go. Maybe I can attach the clamp up here. Is that enough of a connection for a ground? Something I'm worried about is, will this catch on fire? Because behind here is, you know, my carpet and things like that. So before I get started, I should definitely do some samples, uh, get some practice. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna use this cheap metal with the with the grounding clamp as a kind of makeshift uh, welder's table. And I'll cut out some small um, just squares and I'll try welding a couple of those together for practice and then we can try on the car. Yeah, so I've got a sample here and I'll just tack it and then try welding it. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. Uh, I think the best way is just to start, so we'll, we'll see how this goes. Uh, I'll get you right in close. Let's just put a little... Whoa! <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so super, super interesting. I want to hold it and see what happens here. <laughs> he just blotches. Oh, I see a puddle now. Oh, I get it. This makes sense now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, you watch so many videos and it's like, oh, you gotta move the puddle and you gotta rotate it like this and you gotta do such and such and such. Nothing makes sense until you do it for the first time. And it was like, why isn't this? I was like, oh, oh, I see the puddle forming. Oh, it's, oh, I can, I can go this way. And I've seen people go little motion, little motion, going, going. I also see that I can see what's gone through and what blows through. So yeah, tons and tons of heat and it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. And I don't know. It... So yeah. Oh wait, this is hot. <laughs> so it starts, puddle goes and it's moving, but then it gets super, super hot. And right over here, it blows out. So, you know, from the videos I've been watching, you gotta go slow, you gotta go on different sides. You start here, do a little bit, start there, do a little bit. Keep practicing. So, something I learned from uh, watching a couple videos about thin sheet metal, because it's such an old Japanese car, I think it might be thinner sheet metal. Being so thin, I heard from some people online that it's better to have a higher temperature and a quicker speed so you can kind of get in, get out, and not have to worry about, uh, you know, waiting so long if, 
I'm patient, so it doesn't matter. I can, I can go slowly through, but it builds up a lot of heat in certain areas. So I'm wondering if, yeah, a little bit hotter, a little bit quicker, maybe I'll play with the settings right now and see if I can kind of get in, get out quicker than I currently am. Uh, yeah, this is, this is so fun. This is so, so fun. <laughs> Okay, let's test it out. <laughs> okay, well, got a finger really close, but what can you do? Little tack, little tack. Looking back now, I definitely started on a tough piece. Okay. Really small, lots of corners, strange shape. You live and learn. Oh, so that's how it blows through. So <laughs> that's, that's it. It is a lot different than fresh metal that we had on the samples. I just touched the old sheet metal and it melted like butter. It was so crazy. Um, this was a really complex shape, so maybe that's why the edges were burning out. Uh, and you know, maybe it was heating in funny places, I don't know. The other ones are a lot simpler. Uh, all I can say is, it felt like the, the wire was coming out and it would hit and then it, would, it, it wouldn't melt. It wouldn't, it wouldn't transfer the, the, the heat. It kind of felt like it was bending. Um, it, it was nothing like the, the sample templates I had. So very interesting and uh, as ugly as it is, that is the first one and I'm gonna be real with you, so yeah. My process involved cutting some cardboard down bit by bit to the size of metal I needed. I saw some people online using paper for their templates, and I'll probably do the same in the future. Like the cardboard was too bulky. Ever so slightly of a bend. Oh, that's not, <laughs> that's not exactly straight. <laughs> not an exact science. Okay, that worked. Uh-huh. <laughs> That kind of works. And I think I could just hammer the rest in place. She's in place. So <laughs> it looks better than the last one, but it's still yucky. I was having a hard time moving around, so I picked up a cheap welding cart from Princess Auto, as well as a couple of other toys.
So on this piece, I want to learn a little bit better how to, you know, how to shape metal. So I'm going to measure out first the tab and it was about 150 and a bit. And then I'm going to come up. Lost my Sharpie. That's there. There's there. So about 15 millimeters off of this is where this starts. I need to learn to scribe. Let's see. Then we are going up 19. So I'm going to, as goofy as that is, I'm going to bend it 90 degrees on this line here. And it should fit right in. This is, just looking at this, feels a little small. 19, I'm gonna check that one more time. Measure twice, cut once. This side is slightly bigger. There we go. Let's see if I can trust myself. And that's 90. Okay. Let's see how it fits. Okay. That, is it hot? That is already better. I can work with that. Good. So we just take off a little bit on this end and maybe a little bit off of there, yeah. That is just about as close as I'm gonna get to a match. Let's see if I can move you up there a bit. <laughs> you know what, we're gonna take some off the top to close those gaps. Okay, so that's a little bit better of a gap. So I can, woo, it's handheld. So very, very happy with this fabrication. My first fabrication. Just stay there, okay. Oh, cause this isn't metal. <laughs> this is something else. Oh, this is deadly. Better angle. No, something like that. Oh, there's a big gap. <laughs> hey, that was good. <laughs> it's ugly, but cleaner. Being that the two surfaces are clean, it's made it much easier to weld for longer. Uh, really, really cool.
Okay, now I just gotta make a piece. <laughs> Metal fabbing is probably the hardest part of this. Just getting everything to fit. I started to adjust the holes to fit my fabricated piece rather than the other way around. That way I could fab with simple dimensions throughout. That kind of works. Okay. Uh. Why is it smoking? <laughs> I welded over here. There's nothing behind it. It's only metal. I checked. The car's not on fire. You can see there was some good spots in here. It's kind of coming down. And then I was starting over here and I don't think I, have enough, I had enough gas. So I turned up the gas and it started being a lot better. Uh, the welds. Uh, stayed a lot longer, they were a lot hotter, so I know I got through. Uh, okay, it's not pretty, but it's kind of fixed, and once I grind it, it'll look better. Roll it all later. <laughs> That's just about it. I think I just need to widen this a little bit. That's actually it. So, uh, I've redone this one. Uh, twice when I first started. Uh, it was really big. I didn't know what I was doing. At the beginning, I was making, you know, nice squared off uh, cuts and drawing them, but somewhere along the line, I decided not to do that because I'm stupid. And on this one, I didn't, and I was having so much trouble. You know, it's small on this end and it's large on this end and it has a curve. And it also has a little lip here. Um, so I was very inexperienced so it was really hard and I didn't do it right and it was really ugly and by the time I got to the structural pieces I had done enough little ones that I was more confident and even though they look terrible uh, they're better than the first ones I did right so I'm coming back to this one because it just didn't look right I'm gonna I ripped it out and I'm going to measure that both of these and all the way is the same length to make it nice and easy for myself uh, you know, you gotta learn and I'm gonna make a nice little lip that comes down and attaches to the rocker and Let's see if I can make a curved piece that doesn't look half bad. So yeah, I'm gonna get at it This works. I want to put a little bend in this. A little hand. 
and then, oh, that one looks perfect. So I just made the same thing and bent it with my hand here. I think I'm on the right track, bending things to fit. I don't know why, it just kind of feels right. If I put it there and then bend it, and then... It caught fire to the inside. <laughs> and here I thought I was doing so well. <laughs> so it caught fire to the inside and I was freaking out. So I threw the jacket on to smother it and it stopped. And it, uh, I really like this coat. It was really cool. I got it in a thrift shop. Ah, well. I knew this would happen. Oh, and it happens right at the end, like I'm right on the final ones. So stupid. I think the only thing left to do is fill in the remaining holes I missed while welding, as well as drilling some of the drainage holes that were originally in the structure. I could also play with the grinder to see how flush I can make the welds, but unfortunately some of the spots are just too hard to reach. I learned a lot and definitely saw a positive progression of my welds as they went along. I tried to push myself on every piece to learn something new and more advanced, and I think I accomplished that. I think I'll try taking some lessons before attempting any body work for phase two of this project. Thanks for making it to the end. Let me know in the comments if you have any tips or tricks that you have for welding and fabricating. They're much appreciated. If I had any lessons learned, it would be don't weld with flammable carpet on the interior. I think that's a given. Keep the holes you cut simple, plumb, with straight lines and continuous widths and lengths. It makes fabricating much easier. Wear long sleeves. Use paper for your templates instead of cardboard. The vice clamp that I used was a little clumsy and I think a normal sheet metal break would be a better use. Try stitch welding the extremely thin metal instead of holding down the trigger for long periods of time. And lastly, it probably would have been better to get an accurate reading of the existing metal before I bought new sheets. I've really appreciated the genuine community that's been growing around this project. For the most part, I've been tackling each of these tasks on my own. For you, the audience, you get to see the final product of all the research, purchases, and new skills I need to learn. What you don't get to see or be a part of is the steps I took to get there. I'm going to be starting a Patreon to create a community around all the behind the scenes work that goes into learning car restoration for the first time. Through this Patreon, I want an opportunity to bring together individuals who share a passion for the beauty of things from the past. Within this platform, I intend to provide you a peek into my day-to-day -day adventures, the research, the evolving thought processes, and the pivotal decisions that define my duty to master the art of car restoration. This won't just create a community to bounce ideas off of, but also allow for more energy, resources, and time to create better videos. You can find the link in my bio and in the video description. I hope to see some of you there, and thanks for your continuous support. Cheers.